I've got this. I'd like a large atomic shake and a double Brahmin burger. And easy on the agave sauce this time. We gave you a password, Veronica. It's for your safety. I know where you live, Ramos. Open up. <sighs> for Pete's sake. Opening up. Welcome back, Veronica. What's up? Well, when two people really love each other, you really don't know this stuff yet? Yeah, they say he built the strip. Of course, they say a lot of things. No one's actually met him. Me? I think it's a hoax. Probably a group of people who want to avoid attention or some made up persona of a self aware computer. Why else would he shut himself in like that? Ooh, do I get a prize if I answer right? Yeah, it's not for poker. I've never seen anything quite like it, but I can tell you it looks like it was fabricated before the war and not at a mint. Some kind of tech. I'm gonna say mid 2200s. Hold on to it. Might be your lucky chip. See you around. Listen up, I'm in charge of security around here, and I can't say I'm too happy about having an outsider waltzing around. But since you came in with Veronica, I'm inclined to cut you a little slack. Just behave yourself, and we won't have any problems, okay? Oh, and the Elder's going to want to talk to you. He's on the second level. Just take a right once you get down there. My office is right here in case you need anything. Just ask for Ramos. Looking sharp, Ramos. Hey yourself, kiddo. Don't work too hard there, Ibsen. Yes, yes.
When Paladin Ramos informed me that Veronica was approaching with an outsider in tow, at first I didn't know what to think. After giving the matter some thought, however, I've decided that an outsider could be of use to me right now. However, I will not force you to help us. Should you refuse, you will be allowed to leave here, though you'd remain Veronica's responsibility. What do you say, outsider? Are you willing to help us? Then allow me to explain our situation. This bunker is currently locked down, allowing no entry or exit, with you being one of the few exceptions. In exceptional cases, teams are sent out to investigate sites or retrieve materials deemed too important to ignore. Three such teams have gone missing recently, and the news of their disappearance has not yet been widely spread to avoid undue concern. In order to maintain the peace and adhere to the strictures of the lockdown, I need to send someone else to discover what happened to them. The less who are aware of this situation, the better. My brothers and sisters were deeply traumatized by the losses we incurred several years ago. It would be imprudent to worry them unduly without first discovering the facts of the situation. I'm glad I can count on you. Oh, and one other thing. The patrols each had a holotape detailing their missions that you can use to track them. The shielding of the bunker prevents us from actively tracking them, but their positions should show up on your map once you get to the surface. Should our worst fears become realized, please bring back all three of the holotapes from the patrols. Otherwise, bring our brothers home. I've given the order that you be given access to some of the equipment our scouts and patrols have scavenged over the years. You won't be allowed to purchase any prohibited equipment, but hopefully some of what's available will prove useful to you. Found the missing patrols, or was something else on your mind? I can spare a little time. What did you want to talk about? That is this base's defensive system. It serves as camouflage and masks all entry and exit from the bunker. We use it to hide our patrols and supply runners, though we still send such out at night to be extra safe. It's a protective measure that was enacted after our defeat at Helios. The NCR was hot on our heels, and we wouldn't have survived another encounter. It was decided that we would stay quiet for a time, heal the wounded, and try to come up with a new strategy. However, after we had fully recuperated, our first scouting measures showed that the NCR's presence in this region had only increased in our absence. There are now more than five times the number of NCR troops in the area as when we fought them and we have half the number we did at Helios. And so the lockdown has been extended. To go outside would be the death of us all. We have some personnel that are allowed to travel on the surface, 
They trade for what we need and occasionally drop off what they acquire. We make sure that they only enter or leave the bunker while the sandstorm is active, to avoid detection. Bye. Try to keep Veronica out of trouble, would you? So, you're the outsider that's been given leave to wander around freely. Desperate times call for desperate measures, I guess. Name's Harden. I'm the head paladin of this chapter. And I think we might be able to help each other out. I don't know what the Elder talked to you about, but I can tell you this chapter is in trouble. And he's at the center of it. Are you willing to listen to what I have to say? As you may have already heard, this entire base is under a state of lockdown. No one goes out except small patrols at night. Most of the chapter has been sealed in here for years. And those few who are outside when the lockdown was initiated are forbidden from returning. Morale has plummeted as time has gone by. And many of our current paladins haven't seen combat outside of training simulations. And all because of the Elder's explicit order that no one be allowed in or out. The only way things will change is if a new Elder is installed. Veronica's a special case. She handles the procurement of supplies. If we didn't let her and those like her back in, we'd all starve. If the Elder could manage it, he'd shut them out as well. And all in the name of security which is why we need to replace him. Of course I have, many times in fact. The Elder has an open door policy and will listen to advice on any subject save this one. He refuses to see that our isolation is slowly weakening us. Aside from being our duty, going out on missions is what kept us strong. And because he fails to see that, he must be replaced. I would. I'm the senior most paladin in the chapter, and have more combat experience than any two others here put together. I'd gladly support another candidate, but no one has the courage to step forward and make the attempt, so it falls to me. I would put this chapter back on the right path if I could just assume leadership. I don't know. I've gone through our records dozens of times looking for a precedent regarding the dismissal of an elder and come up with nothing. The people who are most likely to know how it could be done are also some of McNamara's strongest supporters. So they refuse to help me, which is why we're having this conversation. An outsider such as yourself would arouse less suspicion asking questions about such matters. The fact that the elder has some tasks for you means his faithful won't suspect you and you have a line open to the man himself. In short, you're in a perfect position to help me. Will you at least think about it? If I become Elder, the lockdown will be lifted, and we'll once again be able to send patrols out into the wastes. We'll become powerful again. And when that happens, it will be good to have the Brotherhood as an ally. Good enough? That'll have to do. I'd recommend going to see Ramos first. As head of security, he's more familiar with our protocols than anyone else here. You could also try to find something relevant in our data store, though last I heard Scribe Ibsen is having a bit of a problem accessing it. And if McNamara should give you any tasks, I'd ask that you kept me abreast of them. Report anything you find to me, and we'll move from there. Pardon? Veronica.
Yeah? Head scribe Taggart quickly realized my extraordinary talent when I took the mandatory VR combat testing. Soon after that, he requested that I get transferred to VR specialist training, serving as his assistant. I miss hanging out with the other students all the time, but at least I get to skip all those boring lectures. Well, like just about everyone else here, I grew up in the Brotherhood. My father was a scribe and my mother a paladin. They both died at Helios 1. The others were always like a family to me before that, but afterward they became my family in truth. Later. I can hardly notice that lazy eye anymore, Watkins. Still hiding that hair of yours, Veronica. You're Hello. being watched, so don't get any ideas. is pretty intricately made. It's not an easy thing to fix. The bunker takes a little getting used to, doesn't it? If it's not broken weapons, it's broken power. Scribe armor. Taggart! It's your favorite student. Why is it so important that we research night vision optics? Hello? Yes, what is it? Ah, the outsider. I suppose it's too much to ask that jarhead Ramos to keep outsiders away from my research. I am head scribe Taggart, and I am much too busy to deal with the likes of you right now. Try to keep Veronica out of trouble, would you? Subject E, diagnosis complete. Begin recording. My name is Whitley. I'm a researcher at Adams Air Force Base. Until recently, I was in charge of the DiraFrame reinforcement project for the combat model iBots. iBot DiraFrame Subject E is both the prototype and the last functional model in this test group. I was prepared to make several significant upgrades to the machines. However, as the project was canceled and all DuraFrame assets are being diverted to Hellfire Armor, I am sending this model to the Navarro Outpost. If you're listening to this log from one of our Enclave outposts in Chicago, give this unit whatever repairs it needs so it can continue to Navarro. Our former elder, Elijah, was a... with the new technology. That's why we're here. Helios in the first place. How may I assist you? 
Look, this isn't a great time. Oh, what the hell? It's not like we're making any progress. I'm Ibsen, and I hope your day is going better than mine is. Yeah, I'm in charge of keeping this data system up and running, but accessing it is a little, uh, touch and go at the moment. One of our exploratory patrols, back when we had exploratory patrols, found a data disk in some ruins out in the waste. Well, we finally got around to cataloging the damn thing and got shut out of our own data store the second it loaded. Turns out it had a virus on it. Oh, there are patrols, just not exploratory ones. We've been in a state of lockdown for, well, let's just say it's been a while. The only time anyone gets to go topside is guard duty, or to gather provisions. Other than that, it's steel walls and fluorescent lights for us. Nah, it's not so bad. The world outside isn't exactly a paradise, you know? Still, you can only breathe recirculated air for so long. We've got more than a few people in here who are going a little stir-crazy. I don't have time to think about silly things like politics right now. My main concern right now is getting this blasted data store up and running. Oh, all kinds of things. There was already information regarding the layout and systems of this bunker, but we've since added our own data as well. Prior to the lockdown, we had extensively scouted the surrounding area and compiled dossiers on nearby points of interest. Yes, did you have an idea that might help us? What? No, that... that's brilliant! It would let us seal a portion of the virus to a particular terminal, even when the other parts move. You'll need to locate it on three different terminals in this area in one minute. Any longer and it'll jump, and you'll have to start all over. Locating the virus would probably be nearly impossible, but the pompous little bastard that wrote it made things a little easier for us. Normally, terminals infected by the virus just display gibberish, but we found that terminals the virus moved to had some real data passed to them. We were able to decrypt the data and discovered that it was just messages from the virus's writer taunting his victims. When you find terminals with those messages, lock them down and move on. Find three of them before the virus jumps, and we'll wipe the damn thing. Best of luck to you. I'll tell the others to take a break so they don't get in your way. Oh, and I'll keep track of when it jumps for you. To maximize your chances, wait for my signal before you begin. You actually did it! If you don't mind my saying so, I didn't think you had a chance in hell of pulling it off. But I'm glad to be wrong for once. Thank you, my friend. Please feel free to access the data store at your leisure. I'm only allowed to give you access to non-classified topics, but it's better than nothing, right? I can understand how the man might be frustrated by the current situation. He's a take-charge sort of fellow. Standing around's not his strong suit. I myself often wish we could end this interminable stasis and begin moving forward again. Well, you'd have to get a senior level member of the chapter to unlock a topic for you. I've given you access to what I can, but that's not much. The majority of topics fall under Ramos's aegis, since they'd constitute a security risk. Good luck getting anything out of him. You might have better luck with another member of the senior staff. Try talking to them about it. Bye. How may I assist you? Yes, what is it? 
later. Just when the standing... Evening. Hello, you must be the outsider everyone's talking about. I'm Linda Schuller. If you ever need medical attention, this is the place to come. Yes, I handle all medical needs in the bunker. If you're ever wounded, I can treat you. For a fee. Normally I'd just be the base's medical officer. But my other duties say otherwise. I'm this bunker's head scribe in everything but name. I supervise the research teams. I collate the reports. I attend the meetings. But for reasons beyond me, that buffoon Taggart still gets the title. And don't get me started on that little pet of his. Everyone around here knows what's going on there but her. Oh, I tried. The Elder listened patiently to my carefully constructed argument regarding why the buffoon should lose his position. Then he just as patiently explained to me that Taggart's work was vital to our cause, and that he wasn't to be trifled with lesser matters. But vital to our cause? Hardly. Later. Still breaking hearts there, I see, Scribe Schuler. Your presence here, let's just say it's highly irregular. Outsiders aren't even allowed to know that our bunker's here, let alone come and go freely. You impressed Elder McNamara, obviously. He must believe that you'd be very useful. That's right. Nothing gets in or out of here without me knowing it. Under the lockdown, only essential personnel are permitted to enter or leave. That includes supply runners and high security patrols. All other personnel are forbidden to leave, and any personnel that were out there when the lockdown was enacted are forbidden from returning. Fine by me. So, you've been talking to Harden, eh? He's been looking for a way to use Sir McNamara ever since the lockdown started. Don't get me wrong, he's a good man. But Elder McNamara has done all right by us. If it weren't for him, none of us would have survived at Helios. I'll tell you what I told Harden. There have been only a few cases of elders being dismissed from their posts in the Brotherhood's history. And those involve crimes that someone like Elder McNamara is just not capable of. You can look it up for yourself if you want. I'll grant you access to that portion of the history section of our data store. See Senior Scribe Ibsen about accessing it. I'm sure someone's told you all this before. Several years back, we were running our chapter out the Helios One solar power station. Our elder at the time, Elijah, had some kind of obsession with the place which is the only reason we stayed as long as we did. That place was hardly defensible, and we knew the NCR was moving in on us, but the Elder refused to budge, insisting that he just needed more time. We never found out what he needed time for. Wave upon wave of NCR troopers hit us from all directions. We held out for a time, but we were grossly outnumbered, and they had more men than we had ammo. Eventually, our positions collapsed. Elder Elijah was nowhere to be found, so McNamara took charge and led what remained of us on a counteroffensive west. We lost a lot of men and women, but we broke through and made it here. Make no mistake, McNamara saved this chapter that day. Who was Elijah more like? He was our elder before McNamara. Bright guy, but just between you and me, he was a little off. Our mission is to recover and preserve the technology of the past. 
But Elijah wanted more. He sought ways to improve upon technology, make it better. When we found Helios One, he was like a kid in a candy store. He kept talking about the potential and a grand design never realized. He even insisted we set up our base there, against the objection of nearly every paladin. What followed is a whole other story. Bye. Tell me the primary components of gunpowder. Hello, outsider. Evening. The word came down from the Elder that I'm to offer you some of our lesser wares. As if I didn't have other matters on my mind. Our patrols are always bringing more stuff in. Take a look. If you must know, my inventory check this week shows that our weapon count is one short. Somehow we're missing a laser pistol. Harden will have my head if I don't find that weapon soon. I can't delay my report to him any longer. If you happen to find it, bring it here right away. I might be able to throw a few supplies your way if you do. Welcome to the range. Feel free to use any open lane. Torres must be getting desperate if she's accepting help on this one. I'll tell you what I told her. My records show that Initiate Stanton was the last to check it out, but checked it back in a day later. Later.
Yes, can I help you? Oh, man. I told Watkins this wasn't going to work. Look, Watkins and I snuck out one day. She said it'd be a training exercise. Said she heard from a guy on one of the patrols that there was a gulch just southeast of here with scorpions in it, and that we had to check it out. There were scorpions out there, all right. We started using them for target practice, but before we knew it, the damn things were all around us. So we made a run for it, and in all the commotion, I dropped my pistol. Watkins keeps urging me to go back and get it, but that's not going to happen. You can go outside, though, can't you? You can return the pistol to Torres and clear this whole thing up for me. Oh, I sort of altered the records after we got back. That was Watkins' idea, too. That girl is nothing but trouble. Still, I haven't been exiled yet, or worse, assigned to latrine cleaning duty. But I will if you don't help me find that gun. Great. When you find it, just turn it into Torres and I'll be in the clear. For the Brotherhood!
Uh oh. For the Brotherhood. Brotherhood. 